In this video, I want to take a look at probability generating functions or standard distributions. So we're now going to see the probability generating functions, the PGFs of standard distributions, such as the Poisson distribution and the binomial distribution, as well as how we can derive these results. Okay. Now, these results are given in the form of the book, so it's not like you have to memorize these results, but it is important that you can derive these results from first principles yourself. Okay. So let's say you look at the results then that you need to be familiar with. So for the first result here, then let's say we have a discrete random variable which has a distribution of x here following a Poisson distribution with parameter lambda. Then the PGF, the probability generating function for our random variable x here, is given as follows. So the probability generating function of x here in terms of t is equal to e to the power of lambda times t minus 1. So nice and straightforward there. So that's the first result that you need to be familiar with. For the next result now, if we have a discrete random variable that has a distribution then of x here following a binomial distribution with the parameters of n and p, then the PGF for our random variable x here is given as follows. So again, the probability generating function for x here, our random variable, in terms of t is equal to this here. So 1 minus p plus pt all to the power of n. So that's the second result here that we need to be familiar with. Moving on to the third result now. So again, if we have a discrete random variable, this time now with the distribution here of x following a geometric distribution with the parameter p, then the PGF for our random variable x here is given as follows. So the PGF for x in terms of t is equal to pt all over 1 minus 1 minus p times by t. So that's the penultimate result that you need to be familiar with. And then finally here, the very last result then, so again, if we have a discrete random variable that has the distribution here of x following a negative binomial distribution with parameters of r and p, then the PGF, the probability generating function for our random variable x here, is given as follows. So as you can see here, the probability generating function for x in terms of t is equal to pt all over 1 minus 1 minus p times by t all to the power of r. So these are the four results that you need to be familiar with. As I mentioned previously, these are all given in the form of the book, but it is important that we can derive these ourselves from first principles. Okay, so that gives us everything that we need here then for our introduction. Let's take a look now at some practice questions. Let's get started then with question one here. Now for question one, it just wants us to write down the probability generating functions for the following distributions. And as we can see here, we're given three distributions. So let's begin with the first one then, part A. So for part A then, we have x here, which follows a binomial distribution with the parameters of 10 and 0 0.5. So 10 and 0 0.5. So given that this question just wants us to write down the PGFs here, it's not asking for us to derive them from first principles. We can simply use the results given in the formula book. Okay. Now given that we have a binomial distribution, we're going to use the following result here. So we're going to use g of x in terms of t. And this is equal then to bracket 1 minus p plus pt all to the power of n. Okay. Where in this case, p is equal to 0 0.5 and n is equal to 10. Okay. So you might find it useful just to kind of highlight those separately. I've just done there. So in that case, then our PGF here for part A, this is given as follows. So we get bracket one minus P, so that's one minus 0 0.5. So we get 0 0.5 again, plus PT, so that's going to be 0.5 T. And that is all to the power of N, where N is equal to 10. Okay. And we can make this look a little bit neat here by factoring out a half. So I'm going to get 0.5. And when we factor out the 0.5 here, we need to also raise that to this power then. So we get 0.5 to the power of 10. And we've got the bracket here of 1 plus t. So 1 plus t. And again, this is to the power of 10. And if we just evaluate this here, then 0.5 to the power of 10. That is the same as 1 over 1024. Okay, so we get 1 over... 
1024 bracket 1 plus t all to the power of 10. Okay, and there we have it. So that's the solution to part A. So now for part B then. So what do we have for part B? Again, we've got x here. So x follows a geometric distribution with a parameter of 0.25. Okay, now given that we have a geometric distribution here, we need to use the following result. So in this case, we're going to use g of x in terms of t is equal then to pt all over 1 minus 1 minus p times t. Okay, so that's the result that we're going to use here then for this random variable x here or this distribution. So therefore, g of x in terms of t, that's going to be equal to pt, so that's 0 0.25 because p here is 0 0.25. That's our parameter here for this geometric distribution. So we get 0 0.25t. And this is all over then 1 minus here. So we've got 1 minus p, so 1 minus 0 0.25. So we get 0 0.75 there. So we get 1 minus 0 0.75t. Okay. And we can make this look a little bit neater again. If we multiply through by 100 here, both with the numerator and the denominator then, what we get here is 25t all over 100 minus 75t. And then, well, I've got a common factor here of 25 within the numerator and the denominator. So what would that give me then? That would be t all over 4 minus 3t. Okay. And there we have it. So any of these are fine, really. But um, well, that is the neatest way that we can give the solution there for part B. And then finally, we arrive at part C. So we've got just about enough room here, I think, for part C. So we've got x here, which follows a negative binomial distribution with the parameters of 5 and 0.2. So let me just write that down to begin with. So x follows negative b. With the parameters of 5 and 0.2. Okay. Now, given that we have a negative binomial distribution here, we need to use the following result. So we're going to use g of x in terms of t. And this is equal then to this expression here, all to the power of r. So let me just write that down. So we get bracket pt all over 1 minus 1 minus p bracket t. And as we said, this is all to the power of r. OK, that's our parameter r there. So in that case, then, let's do it over here. What we get then for our PGF here for part c, we get g of x in terms of t. So it's up to you where you identify the parameters here. So r is 5 in this case. So r is 5 and p is equal to 0.2. Okay, so in that case then, what do we get here? Well, I get pt, so that's going to be 0.2t. So we get 0.2t there, and this is all over then. 1 minus here, so 1 minus p, so that's going to be 1 minus 0.2, so we get 0.8 there, so 1 minus 0.8t. Like so. And this is all to the power of r, where r is equal to 5. So we get this here. And then we can simplify the inside of this bracket here, just as we saw what we did for part b, something similar to this then. So in that case, then, if we simplify this here, what do we get? Well, I could write this as t. So I've got bracket t over, what am I going to get then? 5 minus 4t, perfect. So 5 minus 4t there. And don't forget that this is all to the power then of 5. Okay. And there we have it. So that is the solution to A. That's the solution to B. And that is the solution to C. And that gives us the solution there to question 1. 
let's just take a look then at one more question here to finish with. So we've got question two, and for question two here, we're given a random verb which has the following distribution. So x follows a Poisson distribution with parameter of lambda. Now for this question, it's asking us to prove from first principles that the probability generating function of our random variable x here is given as follows. We need to obtain this result here. Now, hopefully you are familiar with this result. This is a standard result and it is given in the formula book. However, as we mentioned at the beginning of this video, we do also need to be able to prove these results ourselves from first principles. So where do we begin then? Well, the first thing that we need here is the probability then. So we need the probability that random verbal x here is equal to some value, let's call that little x. Now, in the case of this distribution here then, what we get here is simply, so we get e to minus lambda times lambda to the power of x, and that's all over then x factorial, okay? Now, why do we need this result here? Well, don't forget, for a probability generating function, so that's g of x, in terms of t, that is equal then to the summation here, so sigma of this probability here, and then we times this by t to the power of x, and this is from x equals 0 to infinity. Okay, now the first thing that I can do then is replace this probability here with this expression. So again, I get sigma here, again from x equals 0 to infinity. So replacing now this probability here with this expression, we get e to minus lambda times lambda to the power of x all over x factorial. And then we times this here by t to the power of x. Okay. Now hopefully you might notice here that e to minus lambda is independent of x. So what that means then is this here is just a constant. So we can now apply linearity here and take this outside the summation. So if we do that here, I get e to minus lambda, sigma, again from x equals zero to infinity. And I do appreciate it's a little bit tedious writing it down every single time, but it's important to show all steps of our work in here. Now, what do we get inside the summation then? Well, I'm gonna get lambda to the power of x times t to the power power of x here all over x factorial. So lambda to the power of x times t to the power of x all over x factorial. Now for the next line of work in here, you could have basically done it all as one step here, but I basically want to just show all steps of my work in just to make it clear what I've done here. So now what I'm going to do here is rewrite the numerator here. Okay, so rather than lambda to the power of x times t to the power of x, we can rewrite this here. So again, I'll get e to minus lambda outside the summation. We then get sigma again. And again, from x equals 0 to infinity. Like so. So here we can write this now as lambda t all to the power of x. As I said, you could have just done it all as one step here. Either is fine, but I just want to make sure my working is clear then. So lambda t all to the power of x. And this is over then x factorial. Now at this stage here, some of you may recognize this, some of you may not. If you don't recognize what this is here, this summation anyway, that's absolutely fine. What I'd recommend in that case, and if you don't recognize what we've got here, is to substitute the first few terms of x in then. So for example, x equals zero, x equals one, x equals two, so on and so on. And hopefully from there, you'll then recognize what this series actually is here, okay? So if I do that here, just so you can see what we've actually got then, I get e to minus lambda outside the series then, as we can see here. So what do we get inside them? Well, when x equals zero, we get lambda t to the power of zero. So anything to the power of zero is just one. So I get one here for the numerator and that's over zero factorial, which is also one. So I get one over one, giving us one there. So now when x equals one, I get lambda t to the power of one. So that's just gonna simply be lambda t. That's then over one factorial, which is also one. So I get lambda t over one, giving us lambda t there. So plus lambda t there. Now, when x equals 2 then, what do we get here? Well, I get lambda t all squared, so plus lambda t all squared, and that's over 2 factorial there, 
and hopefully you can see what's going to happen here. We just keep going. So the next term would be lambda t all cubed over three factorial, so on and so on. So this will just keep going on and on and on. Okay. So hopefully you now recognize what we actually have here. This is the Maclaurin series expansion of e to the x where x equals lambda t. Okay. So let me just note that here then. So this here is the Maclaurin series expansion. So Maclaurin series expansion. of e to the x where x equals lambda t okay so in that case and what i've got here is e to minus lambda times um e to the x then where x is equal to lambda t so what i've actually got here then let's do it over here is i've got e to minus lambda times this maclaurin series expansion here of e to the x as we said, x equal to lambda t. So I've got e to the lambda t then. So now let's rewrite this here using the basic rules of indices. So this is the same then as e to the lambda t minus lambda. And now we factorize here within the power then. What do we get? Well, I get e to the power of lambda bracket t minus 1. Okay. And notice here this is exactly what we want then. So therefore, let's write it in full. Therefore, g of x in terms of t is equal then to this result here, e to the power of lambda times t minus 1 as required. Okay, and there we have it. So as you can see, um, it's quite a nice proof, um, and it falls out quite nicely just using this fact here then, the Maclaurin series expansion of e to the x where x equals lambda t. We have the products and then we just factorize and obtain the desired result. Okay, so there we have it. So that gives us the solution there to the very last question, question two. And that actually brings us to the end of this video on probability generating functions of standard distributions.